Public Affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by The Singh Group at Merrill Lynch. Serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years. It's time for Christmas and the Festival of Trees kicks off the holidays here in the cities. Welcome to the River Center in downtown Davenport as we kick off the 2017 Festival of Trees and the theme this year, Jingle All the Way. And take a look at the River Center right now. 650 designers have turned the Great River Hall into a huge winter wonderland. You can thank 3,500 volunteers, 3,500 entertainers, 150 sponsors for continuing this holiday tradition into its 31st year and tonight we'll show you around the festival talk with some of the people who make it happen and get you into the christmas spirit and leading the effort is a cheryl de camp with the festival of trees a director with uh, quad city arts yes when you walk the halls right now festival of trees you're just waiting for those people to show up and you must love just looking at their faces yes and it, it's so I'm going to get all teary-eyed because this morning I, when I walked in, it was like, oh my God, this is really going to happen. With this <laughs> being my first year at the so-called helm, I was like, oh my God, this is really going to take off and it's tomorrow. And with uh, Thursday with the Santa Special Stars, it's such an important day that that just um, is such a happy occasion and very emotional and teary occasion as well. well. Well, you said it's your first year at the helm, but you've been so actively involved with festival. I have been, yes. Um, I started when a number of years ago, my daughter, I shouldn't say how old my daughter is, um, when she, Megan was in fifth grade, we started working when we used to have the zoo tree out front, the critter tree, yes, right. and we had the animal drop, and we started that year, and I've been involved ever since then, and so that was probably something like 20-some years ago. This is really a signature event for Quad City Arts as well. I mean, it, it, it's a neat association that started during some difficult times in the 80s, mm -hmm. and look how it's progressed today. I mean, how important is Festival of Trees? It's huge. Yeah. And I mean, the, the impact for um, our, you know, we benefit Quad City Arts. And if it wasn't for what we do here in the River Center for 10 days, Quad City Arts wouldn't be able to provide what they do with the Visiting Artist Series in the schools for all, so many children within our surrounding community area. Well, we're saying the theme is Jingle All the Way. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you kind of surprised when you take a look around and see how some of these artists have interpreted that theme? Very much so. <laughs> um, it's, it's an interesting concept every year when you go, hmm, I wonder what they were thinking when that Did came that, out of their yes. brain. Yeah, it's like, but. Oh well, we're happy to have everybody. Well, you do also have some very important specials. I know that in the last few years in particular, you've really had a military patriotic component to Festival of Trees, including a, a, a military day, which is Sunday from 10 until eight o'clock, $2 off on admission. Yes. Um, it really has been kind of an important part to Festival is, is to salute the military. It's very important. I mean, our presence here at the arsenal with the military, you know, with the army that's here in the arsenal. And I, we need to make sure that we remember and continue to recognize and honor our veterans. And if that's what we can do by having a day honoring them, we need to be doing that. Well, not only do you talk about the veterans and the military, it's also really very much kid friendly. I mean, you, let's be honest, the arts are for ages, what, zero to a hundred. Mm -hmm. And so to get the kids involved um, is special. And, and Fessel has really done that in different ways. You've always had a separate art area mm -hmm. for uh, young artists. Tell me about that. Uh, this, uh, we have an area called Budding Designers. Mm -hmm. This year it's up on the second floor, which is kind of our children's area, so to speak, because that's where Santa is and it's where our new reindeer game area is. And all of our budding designer trees are up there and we probably have 30, between 30 and 40 budding designer trees from area uh, youth within the school districts. Are you surprised at the quality of the work that you keep getting from these school districts? No, it's wonderful. I mean, it's like these kids put their heart and soul into it. You also have Be Original Art Gallery, which features a local artist. I mean, you really kind of want to underline the local artistry that's yes, here. Yes, we do. Um, and actually what Dawn uh, wolford Mattel, who's the gallery manager in Rock Island, she brings product from the gallery in Rock Island over here so we can showcase and sell here what we, at, we do in Rock Island at the gallery over there. 
So we always talk about the displays that are here mm -hmm. at the River Center, which are fantastic. But Festival of Trees is also known almost for daily events. Yes. Um, and I, I, the Daddy Daughter Ball that's already sold out. Sugar Plum is sold out. It sold out early this year. I was going to say, have you ever thought? Because that sells out so quickly, yes. so often. That's got to be really rewarding. Plus, I mean, you get to see the daddies and daughters, and yeah. it's like, <laughs> like God, is that God a tear helped in the, the eye? yeah, God helped the dad who forgot to get the tickets. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But tell me a little bit about that particular program because it is so incredibly popular. It's, I mean, it's it's just a fun event. Um, the moms and the dads have made it so special for the young girls because a lot of them come, they've gotten their hair done for the first time. And they get, it's almost like Christmas, well it is Christmas, they get to go get their Christmas dress early. And the little girls are just absolutely beautiful. They come to the Sugar Plum Ball looking like we have 400, 500 princesses in absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and it does make for a special night for the whole family yes. as well. Yeah. Sizzlin' Soiree is a little bit different this year too. It you is. moved it. We did move it. We were um, a little, we had outgrown our venue prior year. And so we went to the waterfront and we have new co-chairs this year and they've, um, done some different things so i'm very excited about soiree uh, we're still selling tickets for soiree they'll be available through friday i guess that's tomorrow no that's in two days yeah uh, yeah i've lost track of days They're available <laughs> through friday that's fine yeah. uh, and also i mean when we're talking about uh, fundraisers you got the celebrity lunch that comes mm -hmm. the day before thanksgiving yes. um is it important to have these uh, and i should point out isn't it the 25th anniversary of the parade as well it is the 25th yeah, anniversary how do i of forget about that oh my gosh yeah well and what you like about the parade i would think is that not only is it a chance for families to come down to davenport but hopefully once the parade is over your doors are wide open we want them to come in here actually we open at nine o'clock in the morning so we're already open so people can if they want to come in first because you get your hand stamped when you come in with your general admission and then visit the parade and then come back or go to the parade and then come on in we'll be here ready to go. One of the things also is that the uh, your activity center, mm -hmm. uh, which I think features the North Pole, like you said, that has been moved as well. So uh, it, some people are creatures of habit and they'll be looking for certain things in certain areas and changing it up is kind of an important I'm, thing for you to do. It is very important. Um, we, um, after 20 years, our co-chairs for the North Pole um, said we've had a great time, but maybe someone else can do something different now. And so we decided to put everything under one roof. So Santa and uh, the North Pole per se doesn't exist any longer. It's now called Reindeer Games. And so upstairs on the second floor, and I can see it from here, uh, are the Reindeer Games and Santa Claus is up there with his hours and the budding designers, like I said before. So everything that's children related is upstairs this year. And the whole idea pretty much is to keep it all yes. in one area yeah. so that the family can just spend so much time in mm -hmm. this one region. Yeah. I always ask this and I apologize, well, but right. what do you hope that the people who visit Festival of Trees this year, what do you hope they walk away with? Oh my gosh, I hope that they leave here with uh, warm hearts and an excitement and ready to go home and start their own holiday season. Because you do have to pay tickets to come in, Yes. but you get to steal the ideas for free. <laughs> you, you could, you're exactly right. Because photography is totally allowed. So you can see a tree that you really like. Some people think, I could do that and maybe we might generate some interest and get someone to come back and do a tree of their own. And, and you have actually seen that happen. Yes, You've seen yeah. people that have been enthralled with Festival of Trees and then yes. they become participants the next year. Yes. It, it's kind of nice to try to find that next generation. Mm -hmm. and, and we're looking for that. We need to continue to cultivate that on a daily basis, year after year. We really need to do that. Cheryl DeCap with Festival of Trees, thank you so much for Thanks, joining Jim. us. We do appreciate it. Well, the judges have already given some of their opinions of what the best of the best is. And we want to show you the first place non-traditional tree. Now, as you enter, you get to see a quartet of trees celebrating the four seasons. Uh, Marty Huber designed those trees featuring the buds of Christmas. I'm sorry, the buds of spring, I should say, the patriotism of summer, the colors of fall, and the icicles of winter. It is the winner of the first place non-traditional tree right in the entryway, right here at the Great Hall of the River Center. Up next, what it takes to transform this building into the winter wonderland that you see. And later, it's a wonderful life on the radio, on the stage how you could take part in that. But first, Laura Adams joins us with some of the great ideas that you can do when you go out and about. This is Out and About for November 16th through 22nd. Hi, I'm Laura Adams. Kick off the holidays with Moline Center's newest event, Holiday Hop, November 17th at 4 p.m. with over 40 businesses presenting family-friendly activities in downtown Moline. The following night, it's the lighting on the commons at the John Deere Pavilion at 6. 
Festival of Trees, the beloved Quad City holiday tradition, begins November 16th, and the Festival of Trees holiday parade starts at 10 on the 18th. Find something for everyone on your Christmas shopping list at the 13th Geneseo Annual Holiday Shopping Expo. The Quad City Symphony Orchestra presents Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in concert at the Adler Theater November 18th. Odell Public Library in Morrison, Illinois presents Richard Kimball's Vote Smart, part of his Midwestern Facts Matter tour. The Quad Cities Interfaith Fundraising Breakfast is November 16th at the Rogalski Center. Or Catch Love Letters starring Gene Wigand at the Black Box Theater the 13th and 14th, followed by It's a Wonderful Life, a live radio play the 17th through 19th. Playcrafters Barn Theater presents the heartwarming holiday show Miracle on 34th Street through the 19th. Opera at Augustana and the Augustana Chamber Orchestra present Odysseys on Land and Sea at the Brunner Theater. The Quad City Theater Workshop presents Almost Maine, a series of heartwarming romantic and poetic vignettes, and the hilarious Elf the Musical opens at Circa 21. For more information, visit wqpt.org. Thank you, Laura. We want to feature some of the displays that are here at the River Center. This is the uh, Hearth and Home display, all in white. Beautiful dresses surrounding a, a silver-wrapped fireplace. Spectacular. It is called Christmas Bells, B-E-L-L-E-S. It is uh, created by uh, designer uh, Denise Durbin. It is spectacular and one of the things that you can see here at Festival of Trees. So what exactly does it take to create Festival of Trees? And how do you actually transform an empty river center into what is a holiday wonderland right now? And joining us is Monte Ponsetto, of course, from Festival of Trees. Yes. Oftentimes the leader here, you're a consultant this year. Yes. Tell me about the beginning. I mean, you're taking possession of a very empty space. Oh yeah, huge empty space. And we have a, a core group of uh, crew guys that that come in, they bring in everything. We have trailer loads of things that we use from previous years. They start on November, uh, this year it was October for, or October 30th, excuse me. And uh, yeah, and just fill in the space. I mean, we've got uh, ceiling treatments that need to go in. We've got all the displays that need to be created and the gift shop and gingerbread and all of these structures that need to be put in before the designers can even come in. And you have a call for designers even before that. I mean, Correct. where does that process start? Because, I mean, these people aren't just designing these right. uh, creations a week beforehand. Right. There's quite a process. Right. We have a, a design team that uh, starts that process really early in the spring, and they put the call out, you know, designer interest. There's a party that they give to kind of to explain the process what you need to do, um, the time frames, all of that. And then they get those interest cards back and just go from there. And, and slowly those uh, designer, you know, come in and, and, and decide to uh, be a part of festival. What kind of designers are they? I mean, some people I, I'd assume are relatively new to this. Yes. And others love to participate yeah, each and every yeah. year. Yeah, well, we have designers that come back, obviously, year after year after year, and wonderful designers. And they might be professional designers. They could just be, you know, artistic people, creative people. Um, and then we also have first time designers that, you know, they've come to festival year after year or heard about it and decided they'd like to try it themselves. And uh, so businesses also sometimes provide their own designers so it's just a, a mix of different uh, skill sets and people and well it's a good example just, of a lot of local talent as well yeah, because yes. it seems that you do have a lot of regional uh, uh, designers but right. the emphasis really is local isn't yes it? the core is really from the quad cities and neighboring uh, communities but we have uh, one designer as far away as uh, Naperville Illinois so yeah we we get a little outreach there. Well, this year's theme is Jingle All the Way. Right, I mean, it's right. got to be kind of fun that when you have a theme and you see how people interpret that. Right. Um, that's kind of the joy of Festival mm -hmm. Trees, isn't it? Right, right. And yeah, and, and you know, we hope every year that uh, the theme does spur that creativity and imagination and allow for people to think of think of the theme in very different ways. So we have all sorts of different designs and trees and, and that can incorporate that theme. Well, and one of the other areas, of course, is that you have different categories. You right. might have a, a right. patriotic area or a children's theme tree right. Or, right. Or, or rooms as well. Right. Uh, it 
gives, uh, I think, the designers uh, some idea of what they have to do, but it gives them an awful lot of leeway on how they can do it. Oh, sure, sure. And that's, and that's the beauty of it, and that's why we have so many fabulous different types of designs. And so when people come in, they can see, you know, oh my gosh, you know, look at how they incorporated this, or, or I never would have thought of doing this with a, with a tree or a room. Well, the other thing I want to point out with two things, actually, mm -hmm. one is that each of these trees, each of these uh, uh, door presentations, the wreaths, everything is for sale. Because the yes. whole point is a yes. fundraiser for Quad City Arts. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so when people are actually looking around, first off, you know they're stealing ideas for their homes this right, Christmas. Right, right. So that's free, yeah. but if you actually want to uh, buy one of these, they're all for sale. Right, right, and and the first opportunity is our first night, where you uh, many of the trees will be available for, you know, buy it now, they can buy them directly off the floor, have to wait until the end of festival, of yeah, course, nice but uh, uh, they it. can purchase them then, and then if they're not sold first night, then they go into continuous auction, or yeah, continuous auction. We also have other trees that uh, might be raffle trees. So, you know, you can spend a dollar or two and put your name in a box and hopefully you'll win. That's a great idea so, too. Uh, yeah, and all the designs. Um, now, some of the areas like small wonders, ornaments, stockings, those are all just, you know, buy it by the sticker price. Exactly, okay. Mm -hmm. And and last thing is uh, judges. Yeah. Um, you're going to see uh, ribbons at a number right. of these locations mm -hmm. showing some of the best in shows in first place. Right. Tell me a little bit about the judging technique and, and who are these okay. six people, am I yeah, correct? There are six people and they come from different walks of life again. Um, they might be designers themselves, they might be artists. A um, couple of people are, are art teachers this year mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, different types of people who have a keen eye and what they do is they look at the criteria for each one of those different categories like say the handmade trees, um, it needs to be 60% of the ornamentation needs to be handmade to be able to um, qualify be judged for that. and qualify okay. for that award. So they look at the different criteria, see if the tree fits within those criteria, and then, you know, there's always that personal assessment and, you know, how well was it done, how mm -hmm. uh, effectively was it designed. Did it and catch the artist's little, eye? Yeah, yeah, right, and a little bit of their own personal taste. So one group of six may see something completely different than another that's group fair. of six. Well, that's the way judging goes, though, Exactly, isn't it? exactly. What do you hope that the uh, spectator, that the visitor, takes away from this year's festival? Well, I hope they take away a design, <laughs> that that would be first nice. of all. Uh, <laughs> um, but just that, you know, this is the joy of the holidays, and so, you know, look at, look get the spirit of the holidays and uh, you know take home some of those ideas and incorporate them into your own holiday uh, time and, and uh, just have a great time here. Mata, it's always good to see you. Thank happy you. Holidays Thank you. you happy well. holidays to you as well. Hey, we also want to show you that the holiday season can be quite a racket. Get it? Just ask designers Claire and Tom South who made this tree out of tennis rackets. It's to honor Rock Island native Madison Keys and won two ribbons actually, best in show tree and best sports themed tree, just one of the displays here at Festival of Trees. And since we're talking about the holidays, let's uh, also bring along a little bit of the holiday music of the season. Danica Holmes is uh, touring in Ohio and Virginia right now, but we caught up with the Alito native a few years ago where she gave us a bit of a Christmas concert. We wanted to include this song in particular. It's called The Christmas Song. Here's Danica Holmes. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe Help to make the season bright Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow Santa's on his way He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh And every mother's child is gonna spy To see if rain 
That's Danica Holmes and the Christmas song. Well, there's a tradition this time of year that involves a man named George, a crisis of conscience, and of course, Zuzu's Petals. It's a Wonderful Life is hitting the stage this weekend at the Black Box Theater in downtown Moline, but this one is a little bit different than perhaps past performances that you've seen, and it's not because of my two guests, of course, but it's because it's a radio adaptation on the, uh, on the stage. Uh, Jason and Aaron Platt joining us, who are members of the cast, and. Jason, this time you get to play George, George Bailey. Bailey. Yeah, I've been promoted. <laughs> I, I was playing Potter for the first two times I've done this, and now I don't know. I guess I guess I, I my Potter wasn't good enough. I well, guess. we no, first off, it was <laughs> it was wonderful because I saw the first time. I, but it, it's kind of fun to be able to play both sides, right? Because I mean. Uh, you hear time and again how much more fun it is to play the bad guy. Now you get to play the good guy. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Potter was great because of that very same reason, but uh, I have been in love with this movie since 1987. I Actually, the summer of 1987, I watched it almost every night that summer. I discovered it and... During yeah. the summer you discovered it? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Timing. I was at the Winn-Dixie and I, there was a VHS copy for five bucks and I bought it. And good investment. Yeah. Yeah, well, and here I am. Aaron, you were a part of the production last time as well. Yes. Tell us a little bit about this whole play within a play almost. Okay. It's, it's a really unique concept in that you've got, um, when you say it's a live radio play, yes, it is for radio, but it's actors from a radio studio. So you're watching the actors as they prepare for the play. So you'll also, so you'll see all of these characters come in. You'll see um, the Foley artist, you know, making all the sound effects, you know, of course, clapping Which really and is part of the fun of this, Right, it, it really, oh, yeah. it, he's actually my favorite character. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 but that gives you kind of an, uh, uh, a feeling of authenticity that takes you right. back to the radio days of the 20s, 30s, absolutely. and 40s. Absolutely, absolutely. You get to play Zuzu? I do. <laughs> Not I the do. biggest role, but oh, such an important role. I know. Who doesn't love Zuzu's petals? Absolutely. Jason, tell me a little bit about uh, how this, how you prepare for a play like this, because we were talking about so many times, you have to memorize all these lines, but here, like me, you got cheat notes all over the place. Oh my the gosh, it's so great. It's, it's, it's <laughs> one of my favorite shows I've ever been a part of, but the commitment level is really low as well, because you don't have to memorize anything. As, as a radio show, we get to have our script with us the entire time. And don't think that we're going to be sloughing off or just reading it. We actually are going to be acting it out. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's a really, it's a great experience. Well, Aaron, i got to admit that when I saw it a few years ago, I mean, it, as a member of the audience, you're almost a part of it. And I know that's really important for actors and actresses to do, is to actually pull the audience into the performance. This, this uh, play actually allows that to happen in so many different ways. It does. It's really exciting to do it at the black box this time. Um, brand new space, but it's such an intimate setting. Mm -hmm. And so this, you, you know, you kind of feel like you're a little voyeuristic almost, you know, as the audience member. It's almost like you're peeking through the window mm -hmm. of this radio set. And so that's, I think, really, you know, being able to connect. You know, I mean, you're right up there with the action. Yeah, the black box, the new theater in downtown Moline. Yes. Um, and, and just a limited seating. I mean, it's not a huge space. So, I mean, the seats you get, there's not a bad seat in the house. No. That's true. Yep. So, what is it that you're going to do as far as your performance? I mean, do you try to tailor it to each, uh, each uh, audience that does come in? 
Well, uh, I think that goes to the fact with any any performance anywhere, but uh, with with this one in particular, there's such a these characters are so well known that you want to capture an essence of what is familiar to them, mm -hmm. and not so much be like a caricature, but kind of grabbing that the essence and of I, what they know. I think that's also a little difficult yeah. in that it, they are such well known characters, and so you want to do them justice, right. you know, but yet put your own spin on it, but not so much so that people are like, no, that's that's not how Zuzu. Well, we have a discerning audience here at WQPT, <laughs> so let's hear your best uh, Zuzu. I want to hear the oh, actual, no, yes, I want to, no, oh no, no, we're putting, no. hey, the audience wants to hear it. <laughs> so what does Zuzu sound like? Oh my gosh. Get your inner she, Zuzu going. Inner Zuzu. All yeah. right, um, I'm trying to think what one of her lines is. I want to give my flower a drink. That was phenomenal. That is, I don't know who the kid was that did it originally, <laughs> but you outdistanced that by far. Right, thanks. Do you Jim. try to sound like George Bailey, as as all of us remember George Bailey? Or I, do you I like to think own? I do. So hit it. Let me hear it. I would like to give my flower a drink. No, that's <laughs> Zuzu, I think. Oh. George never said that. I'd have to double check the screen. Let me check. <laughs> George never said that. Uh, what, what's a what's a line? Um, uh, Wow. Well, Mr. Potter, I, I, you're, you're, a, you're a mean old man, is what you are. So will you have to sing All Lang Syne at the very end? Because of the movie, I thought, if you listen to the very end of the movie and you hear Jimmy Stewart, oh my gosh, he's an awful singer. <laughs> I mean, it was like, I mean, his jaw goes everywhere. You know, that end. might be the reason why they cast me in this particular <laughs> role, because I don't have to sing as much. <laughs> yeah, that could be, that could be. Give us your best pitch. I mean, why should people bring their families to a performance like this? Well, number one, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's a great weekend to go downtown Moline. Um, there's so much happening. The holiday hop on Friday night, the, the lighting on the commons on Saturday. Um, it's just, it's a great way to get in the spirit. They have all of the lights up over the streets. It reminds me a lot of the scene in Bedford Falls when he's uh -huh. running down Main Street saying, you know, Merry Christmas, Savings Alone. And, so. and, and there are some twists in this. I mean, it's not exactly the same as the movie, if I remember right. There's a couple little changes that'll surprise well, people. Well, there, there are some adaptions Subtle. that have to be uh, mainstream for this, for a radio broadcast, sure. basically. Mm -hmm. But it's really great, and you can bring the kids, and they can actually see it happening yeah. and imagine it with the mind's eye. Mm -hmm. Jason and Aaron Platt, thank you so much for joining us. It's a Wonderful Life, a radio play that you get to see at the Black Box Theater in Moline. Just a reminder, the doors are open to the River Center every day, uh, except for Thanksgiving, and it is also going to be staying open all the way till next Sunday. Festival of Trees open to the public from 9 in the morning until 8 at night, weekdays and Saturday, from 10 until 8 this Sunday, 10 until 4 on the closing night next Sunday. Tickets are on sale right now. It's $10 for adults, $6 for seniors over 60, and $5 for members of the Plus 60 Club, and $3 for children between 2 and 10 years old. On the air, on the radio, and on the web, thanks for taking your time to join us on The Cities. Public Affairs Programming on WQPT is brought to you by The Singh Group at Merrill Lynch. Serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years.